with everything that's happened over the last week, Le'Veon Moss is going to be a top five running back in the SEC. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Le'Veon Moss, in this role that he now has, thanks to the injury to Ruben Owens, will be a top five running back in the SEC, and. The simple reason why, when these two were getting ready to be a two-headed monster, which would have been great had Owen stayed healthy, it would have been a really good one-two punch, but they almost would have taken away from one another. You know what I mean? We've talked about how last year at Kansas State, Coach Klein had a RB1, a guy, and then it kind of, I wouldn't call it a 1A, 1B. It was a running back one and a running back two. The running back one had about 1,300 yards. The running back two had less than 1,000. And he had a, you know about 17-ish carries per game compared to the other running back who, who had not as many as, as the starter. And I don't think that was going to be the case for Austin Owens. I thought that Ruben Owens and Le'Veon Moss would be really close to splitting the carries. Not to say that it's... I Y'all know, I mean, I thought that Ruben Owens was going to be the starter, but I thought it was really close. I thought it was like 51-49 when it came to my difference in opinion on these two running backs. Now, with Owens done for the year, which is just a tragic injury for, for the player, of course, and for this team. I mean, you're going to really miss that depth at, at um, running back because he's a great player who was set to break out. But Moss is an excellent running back. I love his style of play because he can do it all. Now, in all honesty, pretty much all of the running backs on this Texas A&M roster are versatile like that. They are pretty solid at making sure – they can do everything. They can catch passes. They're power backs. They're quick. They can run through you, around you, past you, whatever they need to do. And I like that. You know, I mean, we've, in the NFL, right, you watch Derrick Henry play. He's not he's not a pass catching back. He'll ca- catch passes here and there. But you can just, just look at him trying to catch passes. You go, okay, this is not his role. He is a ground and pound guy. I love it when running backs have multiple skill sets. They're three, three down backs. And in my opinion, Every running back that we're going to talk about today is a three down back for the Aggies. Um, But I don't, this is where the conversation gets really interesting to me. So Amari Daniels, I think now becomes the RB two, but, and y'all know I had Ruben Owens listed in, in my depth chart as the RB one does Ruben Owens. I mean, does Levy, uh, excuse me, does Amari Daniels, now move into the role that I thought Le'Veon Moss was going to play as this year's kind of 1B and or RB2, whatever you want to call him? Or does Amari Daniels kind of play the role of the running back two we saw Kansas State last year? That is where this conversation gets interesting. And that is where I think the upside of Le'Veon Moss being a top five running back in the SEC comes into play. You know, To be a top five running back in this league, it's going to be really hard to do that if you're splitting cares, if you're in a 1A, 1B type of situation. You know, ETN and Jarquez Hunter and some of the other elite running backs in this conference, they're going to be, I mean, they're not going to get every single carry. I mean, they're not going to get 100% of the carries, but I bet they get close to 75, 80% of the carries, somewhere in that, probably in that 65 to 85%. That's where I think ETN and, and Jarquez Hunter, their carry number is going to be because they're the alpha dog in their running back rooms. And that wouldn't have been the case for either running back had Owens stayed healthy. Now that Owens is down with the injury, I think Le'Veon Moss gets closer to that 60, 65% of the carries that he wasn't going to get if Ruben Owens was still on the field or Ruben Owens wouldn't have gotten, you know, if, if they were. Um, you know, a one-two punch. And 
that to me is is going to be a really really fun part of this season. How much bigger does Le'Veon Moss's role get now? And I think it's substantial, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the one thing I want to reiterate, I think that Amari Daniels and and heck, I think EJ Smith as well are great running backs. I loved this room's depth before the injury to Ruben Owens. Now you're one injury away from going, uh-oh, you got to stay healthy there. That goes without saying. But looking at Le'Veon Moss and at this room top to bottom, you still feel good about where you're at. You know, I, I hate saying I feel bad for Texas, but, I mean, they just lost their second running back. Like, Texas A&M, we're not in a spot where we can afford that. You cannot have another guy go down. We've been seeing injuries. Uh, I've seen well, there's been a ton of injuries recently in college football. You got the two running backs that went down at Texas. Uh, Kentucky's running back got hurt. He broke his hand. I saw that. You've seen, uh, and then Ruben Owens. I mean, you've seen a lot of running back injuries so far over the last two weeks in the SEC. So, got to stay healthy, a. Eh? But now with the opportunity that I believe Le'Veon Moss is going to have in this offense, which I could see being in that 15 to 18 carries per game range, you know, and if he gets that work last year, he just flat out, you know, he, he had got a lot of work, but they were, they spread the ball out a little bit more than that. I think this year, if he gets carries in that range, in that 15 to 18 range, I believe that Le'Veon Moss can be a top five running back in the SEC. And does that mean he's one of the best? You know, now define that, right? Does that mean he's a top five running back in the SEC based on how he looks or the numbers he put, he, you know, ends up showing up in the, in the stat sheet? I think he could do that in both. I think that when you get that many carries per game, you're going to be, because there's some good running backs in this conference. They're going to be getting eight carries a game, you know? So you might go, man, that guy's really good, but he only has 600 yards in the season. Um, So it, there's two arguments there, but I think Le'Veon Moss has an opportunity to be in, in both of those arguments. So I just, I want to reiterate this point. I would be crazy crazy to sit here and act like this injury isn't a big deal. The injury to Ruben Owens. I'd be crazy to sit here and, 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 and tell y'all why it's not a big deal. Y'all know my opinion. Ooh, that was a boo. My opinion. Ruben Owens was the guy here. I thought he was going to be great. I thought he was going to have a really good season. Um, It's a bad loss. It is. It's a player that, you know, I've hyped him up all offseason, but I really think he had the opportunity to become one of the elite running backs in this conference, just based on what we know historically five stars do from their freshman and sophomore season. And, you know, when, when he went down, you obviously go, oh, man, we're in trouble. But as I've harped on all offseason, this Texas A&M running back room is deep. And this – is when you're appreciated when these injuries happen. It was the same way when you lost Donovan Green last year. You go, man, thank goodness we have such a deep tight end room. You know, and that's kind of my take here. You have to be happy that you have such a deep running back room because, yes, it's a painful loss to lose the guy that was projected to be your starter, guy that was projected to be an elite player in your offense. But – you have a really solid supporting cast around him that should make this offense be able to flow just fine, even though who should, was going to be, in my opinion, the guy is gone. So, yes, I believe Le'Veon Moss, if his upside hits, and I think it will, I think he can be a top five running back in the SEC this season. He's that talented. He's a great player. And I've said it even when I was talking about how much I like Ruben Owens, before his injury, I would say on this show all the time, listen, I think that Le'Veon Moss could go and be a starter at a handful of SEC schools. That's how good he is. So he's no joke. And that's the point I wanted to get across. While everyone should be a little upset by this injury and should be a little frustrated that we lost a really talented player on this roster, this room is still in a good spot. And I think Le'Veon Moss now with some extra carries that he wouldn't have gotten can be a top five running back in this conference. Okay. We've got an article to break down 
that kind of feeds into the hype. Are the Aggies a playoff dark horse? We'll talk about that coming up right here on Locked On Aggies. But first, I have got to tell you about our wonderful friends over at Game Time. As I tell y'all all the time, the only place I will ever buy a ticket to any event of any kind where you buy a ticket is Game Time. And that's the reality. I'm going to a concert next Saturday. And where, or next Friday, excuse me, where am I getting my ticket? Game time. When my friends said, hey, let's go up to this concert, wasn't even a debate, wasn't even a thought. I said, all right, let's go get on game time and let's get our tickets. Boom, already taken care of. Easy as can be. We know where we're sitting. I love the game time app. It is the best way to buy tickets. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. So I want to get straight into this article, and the reality here is this: something I've said a lot, but with the schedule Texas A&M has, the upside, the ceiling for this team is a college football playoff appearance. Yes, a lot of people, and I've talked about the negativity surrounding the Texas A&M football program when it comes to fans of other programs. And everyone's entitled to their opinion. That's how this world works. You know, and people, and this was a, a, um, something I talked to our Locked On College Football host, Benjamin McLaughlin, about. You know, he was talking about how, hey, like, People just don't like Texas A&M because of all the players they recruit and they you know, constantly underachieve. I no longer believe that's going to be the case in this program thanks to the changes at head coach. So I understand people that feel that way. I also don't understand why wouldn't you want, like SEC teams shouldn't want Texas A&M to be good with all the talent they're recruiting, but that's that, beside the point. Um, and what my takeaway here is this team is a dark horse to make the playoff with the schedule and with the roster. So let's go through this article from Sports Grid titled 2024 College Football Predictions, Texas A&M's Path to a Breakout Year. So it first talks about the biggest question, can Connor Wigman lead? Um, you know, and they talk about one of the most significant storylines heading into the season is the performance of quarterback Connor Wigman. Um, his talent is undeniable, but his college career has been, um, you know, ton of injuries, all that stuff. And uh, good news, Wigman is surrounded by talent in the supporting cast. Um, so, you know, th the point here is, the question is, which they try and answer in this, is Connor Wigman good enough to lead Texas A&M to hit their ceiling? And I don't have any, any doubt in my mind to say, yes, they do. I mean, yes, he does. I think Connor Wigman has the upside to be, not only a top five quarterback in the SEC, because he definitely has that. And frankly, I, I feel very confident in that. I think he's got a chance to be a top 10 quarterback in college football. That's how good Connor Wigman is. That's how good he can be this season if he hits that upside. And listen, the people I trust more than anybody when it comes to you know play on the football field is NFL scouts and NFL scouts love Connor Rubin. They watch the film and they like what they see. If he can stay healthy, if this offensive line can help him stay healthy, Connor Wigman is going to have an elite season. And if that's the biggest question mark, I think that's going to be pretty simple to get answered. Now, as you ever dare here at locked on Aggies, no, my opinion is the biggest question mark on this, on this um, team is the offensive line. Now, Connor Wigman hitting his upside is also a large question mark here as well. But I just, I feel more confident in Connor Wigman being an elite quarterback than I do Texas A&M's offensive line being really good. So whether that makes you happy, stressed, whatever, that, that's kind of my take on that situation there. This article, it then goes on to give um, Heisman odds, which of course Connor Wigman in, over at our friends on FanDuel is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 from the list of plus 2,000. Um, behind some players in Nussmeyer and, and um, Nico from Tennessee, some players that I think he's going to have a better season than, frankly. Um, then it goes on to say another topic that we have discussed here time and time again 
it talks about the favorable schedule. One factor working in Texas A&M's favor this season is their schedule. The Aggies managed to avoid some of the toughest teams in the SEC, including Bama, Ole Miss, and Georgia. Additionally, all four of their ranked matchups are set to be played at home, giving them a distinct advantage. This schedule opens the door for the Aggies to potentially make a significant impact in the SEC, provided they can capitalize on these opportunities. Once again, this has been my argument. I think people are just starting to catch on to Texas A&M's schedule. I think people are finally starting to go, oh, man, they're only ranked games. They only have four ranked opponents, and they're all at home? Huh. Maybe they can be pretty good. Like I think people are starting to catch on to this fact and the reality of the upside of this Texas A&M team and because of the schedule. As I've said, because the people that I think listen to me claim how this team can win eight and a half, win, hit the over on the eight and a half win total provided to us by our friends over at FanDuel, people laugh at you. And, go, and then I go, well, first of all, the line's set there for a reason. A. B, if Texas A&M was playing Georgia and Ole Miss and Alabama and, you know, in Tennessee, I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. If you take away the matchup with South Carolina and Mississippi State and add in Ole Miss and Georgia, I'm saying, hey, can Texas A&M make a bowl game this year? I mean, the conversation changes quickly. But that's not the reality of this schedule. The Aggies got blessed with a really favorable schedule. And Coach Elko and this team needs to take advantage of it. Then you look at some of the futures here from our friends over at FanDuel. So, yes, once again, the over-under on win totals, eight and a half. SEC championship game winners plus um, 1,200. National championship winner is plus 4,000. And to make the playoff is plus 240. So look at that. Those of you that enjoy gambling, uh, myself included there, plus 240 is not a massive line. It would say up for, to make the playoff. It would say a lot, a lot if Texas A&M's chances of making the playoff were like plus 2,000. Okay, we, we wouldn't, you know what I mean? This would be a very different conversation. These odds makers know what they're doing. And they, once again, to make the playoff at plus 240, that should tell you that there is a chance that this Texas A&M football team can sneak into the playoff. And let's get right on into that. It says right here, while Texas A&M may not be a favorite to reach the college football playoff, there's reason to believe they could be in the conversation late in the year. The talent is there. The schedule is favorable. And if Wegman can stay healthy and perform at a high level, the Aggies could find themselves pushing for a significant bowl game by season's end. The key will be consistency, something that has eluded them in recent history. Texas a and is a team that has garnered attention for all the right reasons heading into the 2024 season with a talented roster and a schedule that sets them up for success. This could be the year the Aggies finally meet their potential and make a serious push in the SEC. I mean, once again, this is basically everything that I have been arguing for, I mean, months, right? I mean, I, I've been making this argument for since we knew the schedule, I mean, I've been sitting here saying if this team, if Coach Elko can recruit, if you get this team right, if you fix problems in the portal, if Connor Wigman gets healthy, there's a lot of ifs, and I think those were answered positively. And you add that on top of who you have coaching this team, and I love this coaching staff. Then on top of the schedule, is Texas a and going to make the playoff? I don't think I'm in a spot right now to say yes or no. I think it's a wait and see. I think you've got to see this team play a couple games. But seeing these things, the win total set at eight and a half, seeing the um, chance to make the playoff set at plus 240, these things are all in favor of Texas A&M hitting their upside this season. And, and I'm just telling you, I think it's time for people who aren't Texas A&M fans to buy onto the hype of this football team. I, I, I think Texas A&M, they're a gritty football team. They're a great culture so far from Coach Elko. I love that. I love absolutely everything about this team and this roster he's put together. It seems like a tight group, uh, just a good group of uh, guys. I love this team, and I think they're gonna. It, it's going to show on the field. So if you aren't bought into the Texas A&M hype, I hope maybe this spiel has got you there because – this team can overachieve, and if that happens, I think it's going to be a really solid season for the Aggies. 
I think Texas A&M is starting to get closer to figuring out who their linebackers are going to be or who, who the linebacker next to Charing York is going to be, excuse me. And that is going to be the conversation we have coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. So all offseason, we've known Terry and York is going to be the guy at linebacker. The question was, and still is, who's going to be next to him? Who's going to be the other linebacker in that front seven that is going to be stopping the run, hopefully getting after the quarterback, defend, uh, covering tight ends, whatever need, need be? Who's going to be that other guy? For a while, I thought it was going to be the Florida transfer, Scooby Williams. And – well, I don't think this race is over yet, I think it's getting closer and closer to being over, and I think Solomon DeShields is going to win this. The transfer from Pitt, I want to pull up his numbers from last year. You know, so Solomon DeShields, let's pull it up right here. Man, you type in Solomon, he's not one of the first people on ESPN. How many scrolls? Come on. How many people are there? Well, I guess Solomon's a common last name, or... I spelled it wrong, but let's see if we type in D. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So last year, Solomon DeShields had 58 tackles. He had two sacks, 27 solo tackles, uh, but he's a veteran. He's a veteran. He's played three years of college football. In 2021, he had seven tackles. In 2022, he had 18 tackles, four sacks. And then last year, of course, the uh, 58 total tackles and two sacks. Ooh, the Pat McAfee show started playing. That was weird. But I think Solomon DeShields is a guy that can be really good for this football team. I think I love veterans at linebacker. It's a position if you miss your gap, if you lose control of the spot you need to be, running backs will score touchdowns on run place. That's the reality. If you shoot the wrong gap, if you go to the wrong place, you will give up touchdowns. We see it happen every week in football. And I think having a guy like Solomon DeShields who has played a lot of college football, it's a positive for a position where you have to be mentally tough to play it. You know what I mean? It, it's not like, you know, I hate saying you don't have to be a smart, you know, high IQ player to play these positions, but like an edge rusher, you know what I mean? An edge rusher, you just, Go, go get them. You know what I mean? Go get them. At linebacker, you have to be watching for so much and prepared for so much because if you make mistakes, touchdowns are scored, big plays happen. You have to have to make the, the good call. And listen, Scooby Williams is a guy who's played a, a good amount of college football as well, coming from, you know, coming to Texas and from Florida. I like both of these guys. I think that you're going to see them both on the field in a in a significant capacity this season. But you know, I, um, I'm just telling you, I think Solomon DeShields is going to end up winning this job. And I think he's a player. I like the frame, 6'3", 235. You know, good luck with that if you're a running back. Um, but, I mean, Scoop Williams also has a good frame at 6'2", 230, a guy it's not going to be easy to run through him as well. But top to bottom, I think this linebacker room, after adding – if you didn't bring in Williams and DeShields, which obviously Coach Elko is going to bring in some players from the portal, but had you not – this would be a real concerning room knowing you got a lot of talent, but it's unproven and young. Now you've got a couple veterans who can come in and give you a couple years and really hopefully make this football team better and give you a, a veteran plan at an important position where you want to have a veteran. So I think the Shields win this, wins this job at the current moment, but it's not over till it's over. So I'll be anxious to see what happens there. But I do think both of those options in Williams and the Shields can be good if need be. That's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here every single day. Really, really appreciate it. Hope everyone has an outstanding rest of their day today. And we will see you tomorrow right here at Locked On Aggies.